Um, am I want to welcome you to this program of the University of Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center. We are pleased to be able to bring you these programs, education programs, and um, help support small business. Please be advised that we are recording this conversation for ASB TDC education purposes. But as a registrant and attendee of the conversation, you will be emailed a copy of the recording and any links that were posted in the chat or any resources that we just pull out of the air and uh, we wanna make sure that you get them. I will introduce Nikki momentarily, but first I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson, a specialty consultant with the Small Business Center, and I'm here with my fellow consultant and co-host, Chris Case. Say hi, Chris. Um, if you don't know about the Small Business Development Center, it is a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas. We're also affiliated with the SBA and a statewide ASB TDC affiliate. We um, are also have a network of over a thousand small business centers across the nation so you are very well supported through us. Locally we are excited to tell you that we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting and programs like this one that cover relevant topics for business owners and so if you are not already a client we encourage you to visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu and we'll give you some more information at the end of the program. Chris do you want to tell us a little bit about how we're going to be doing things today? I will. So today what we're going to do is we're going to bring you the, the special lunch break photo editing like a pro. We love this format because it really gives you an opportunity to talk with experts, ask questions that you may have, and even work through some challenges that maybe you or your small businesses are going through. So this is a conversation. So we really encourage you to ask questions as we go along. Please keep yourself on mute until you have a question or a comment but then you can feel free to unmute, you can raise your hand or even chat us in the chat box. We're gonna be monitoring all of that very closely, but this is very active and participative. It, like we're right here, right in front of you in the same room. Yes, we, everybody is sitting in a table. We all have our little lunch bags out. We are just sitting and around um, hanging out together for today. So we appreciate you all being here and we do love a good conversation and we know that you're taking a few minutes out of your busy day. So we wanna get started. Today we have our resident photo expert, Nikki Toth. Nikki is a professional photographer for small businesses, nonprofit organizations, and families for the past six years. Her professional style is to capture the true essence of her subjects, and she wants to help small businesses um, capture the same every single day. So while we take a few moments to get to know Nikki a little bit, we'd also like to get invite get to know you and so we invite you all to tell us a little bit about yourselves so if you will post in the chat to everyone or you can just post to me or Chris if you want to stay on the DL today um, let us know what industry in, you are in and if you have a specific question or something that you'd like to talk with Nikki about today we will either call on you a little bit later or um, we will share we will we can relay the question for you if you send that privately to me or Chris so Chris will you want to kick us off or Yes, well, Nikki, we want to welcome you. And um, again, anything that you guys want to ask, please feel free to ask and we will be watching everything very closely. Welcome, Nikki. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. It's great to be back with everybody today. Um, it's been fantastic. I've, I've had the privilege of um, doing several workshops over the course of the last few months with ASB TDC. And so today, we wanted to sort of open up the conversation to um, editing on our smartphones. Um, those who are sort of jumping in at this point, um, you are will be able to go back and sort of uh, view some of the past workshops that we've done. We've done a two um, part series on um, general smartphone photography, which was fantastic. And then we did a special series, a, a special workshop just a couple of weeks ago on product photography, which is also really helpful. So um, at this point, we sort of made our way through um, taking the pictures and now we're going to talk about um, what to do after you have these pictures in your phone and um, the, the best and most efficient way to um, to edit them and then what do you do then so <laughs> absolutely and um, so we have a few people here we've got um, uh, New York style pizza hi Mary how are you <laughs> she's also um, comes to our restaurant forum so we're really happy to see you there and um, we also oh my goodness a Dentech Dental Studio. Okay, there is your challenge for the day, Nikki. Wow. Um, 
<laughs> and a home-based travel agent. What an exciting, that's a cool um, industry to be, um, to be looking at. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Um, so Nikki, tell us a little bit about just, you know, we did talk about this and, um, you know, it seems to be photo editing seems to be something that comes up, um, particularly for small businesses. So tell us a little bit about why you think that, you know, photo editing specifically for small businesses is important. I think that we live in such a visually saturated world right now that I think just some really simple, um, just a little bit of knowledge about some simple editing tweaks that you can do for your photos will really help elevate them and sort of break through that noise and um, cause your viewer to sort of slow their scroll down a little bit as they're going through their social media feed. So I think that um, while I think that editing is important and um, it can really make a difference in you know, the final results of your image, I think that um, it needs to be really light handed and really subtle because we want to try to, to keep the authenticity of our images. Um, and I think that really heavy handed editing um, and the use of really heavy filters and presets and that sort of a thing can, um, can end up looking a little less professional and can look kind of dated. Um, so my, my recommendation is always to keep it really simple um, and just sort of um, use it to, to elevate those images. So I think it's something that um, is very simple and intuitive. And we'll talk about some, some specific apps a little bit later, and then we'll go into it in a lot of depth when we have our, um, we're gonna do a full editing workshop in a couple of weeks and we'll go through my favorite editing app um, that is fantastic and super powerful, but also very intuitive and simple to use. So um, I think that editing is something that, um, that anyone can do. There's really no magic to it. They've made these apps so simple to use that, um, that it's just, I think it really is a, a, an efficient, really good use of your time to just spend a couple of minutes editing those images before you release them out for your viewers. So. Fantastic. So I'd really love to hear from everybody, anybody who's um, willing to unclick, mute, and, um, and let us know. So what are some of the things that are standing in the way um, of, for you of photo editing? Are there any hurdles that are specific that you just have a hard time overcoming when it comes to editing photos on your phone? You know, I think of small businesses and I think of you all out there doing your job every single day. So to stop and take a picture, think right. about the context and all these other things and, and what you're gonna do with it. And then you get to the editing and it just sometimes it becomes completely overwhelming. Um, and, and so just, what are some of the hurdles that you all are experiencing and kind of um, help us make sure that we get some of those those challenges answered here today? Hello, this is Greg Nichols with SG Nichols Travel. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. And uh, what I like to do is whenever I travel, I want to show my clients some of the things that we experience. So I want the best shot that I can get but I guess my hurdle is trying to learn uh, Photoshop so I can get that, you know, crispness. So when people see where I've been, it gives them an opportunity. And I'm sorry, the light in here is bad, but um, I guess my lights need to be edited in here. But, uh, I just want to be, you know, find some way or a class that I can really learn how to make the best of my shots. Cause I just bought a Z50, a mirrorless camera. So I want to make sure I put that camera to use and get the best out of it. Absolutely. I think that that's great. And I, I'm very happy that you said that you'd like to have a class because we will have that workshop on um, December 1st at two and we'll give you a little bit more information about that. And that is part of a little bit of what we're exploring today is great. making sure that what's in that workshop gets um, gets some of that. Nikki, do you have some feedback for, for Greg right now? I do. I um I have a lot of things that came to mind. I think that um, that going back those those two workshops that I mentioned that we did, um, I think it was in September and October, they'll be on the ASB TDC website. If they're not there now, they'll be there up, up soon. But those will be really helpful. Now those are smartphone geared, so um, those will not speak to things like using all of the bells and whistles on your DSLR. However, I think that um, if you have a newer smartphone. Um, those can be extremely powerful and can take fantastic yeah. travel photographs. Um, some of the things that, that we talked about in that 
workshop will be really helpful to you. Some things like the, um, there's a con there's a, a term called HDR, and um, that's something that would be really helpful in your in your travel photography because it it allows you to really capture that that the color of the sky as well as like the the rich colors of, of the ground. Sometimes those skies tend to get really bright and then you can't really capture what it looks like, you know, in real life. And so, um, so those types of things that we talked about during that workshop will be really helpful to you. And then if you, and now that you have this new camera though, a lot of cameras, now I don't know specifically about that model of camera, but a lot of times cameras um, can, you can, um, I'm trying to find the right word. You can connect them to your phone so that you can automatically, I guess, um, I sync. Wi -Fi, yeah, you can sync the, the, the files onto your phone so that you can edit them on your phone and then post them in real time, really. So as opposed to taking all these pictures on a trip and then coming home and having to download all these pictures onto your laptop or your, your computer and then go through the editing process there, um, the, the ability to send those images to your phone so that you can edit them. And the workshop that we're gonna, that we're gonna do in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be um, really getting in depth with an app called Lightroom Mobile. And it is a Photoshop, it's an Adobe product. So it's, it's similar to Photoshop, but in my opinion, it's much more user friendly and much more intuitive. Okay. I actually don't even use Photoshop for my professional pictures. I use Lightroom, like the full, um, you know, the full version on my computer. But the yeah. Lightroom app is extremely powerful. So that would be my recommendation would be to try editing um, using that Lightroom app. Um, and especially because then while you're on the trip, you can post these pictures and really make it sort of a conversation between um, your customers, you know, while it's sort of in a real time setting. So, um, okay. yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. Um, Scott. Great tip. Do you have, uh, thanks for thanks for saying hi to us. What a great space you have. That's so cool. It looks very, way more high tech than I, <laughs> than I can, uh, I can handle. Do you have a question for us? You'll have to unmute it. Have, yeah, there you there go. There you go. It just took me a second. Um, yeah, my, my work is, I kind of liken it to the best of my ability to like jewelry. The, the photos that I like to show, they need to have that little bit of sparkle and show the shine. What I do is I make uh, dentures and partials and everything that goes along with anything that comes in and out of the mouth, prosthesis wise. Uh, so it kind of has to have a little bit of shine and I do a lot of my photos mainly online for Instagram and Facebook to promote what I can do to show my work off and everything. And I lighting is, a, is an issue and dust and everything else, you know, the little specks and stuff. And I'm just not quite sure. I know a little bit about Photoshop, but I just, I guess I'm looking for a way to capture it right off the bat instead of having to go in and post edit the photos because that takes an extreme amount of time. And I just really don't have that. Absolutely. I think that um, some things, a lot of things come to mind when I think about your situation. I think that my, um, I think that what, as far as what you're saying, not wanting to spend that time editing, I think you're right on track there because truly the editing is just a small part of it. And you can get your pictures really close to, to finished in with your shooting itself. So what you wanna do, and that's what your goal should be really, because whenever we edit on our phone, we um, every edit that we do starts to degrade the file slightly. So what we really wanna do is we wanna try to get it as close to perfect in camera as we can. Um, not only will that save you time, but it'll create the highest quality image that you can. Um, and some things come to mind. What I think would be really helpful is we did a product photography workshop a couple weeks ago that you'll be able to access um, through the ASB TDC website. And that in that workshop, we talk about a really simple way to set up um, a product, sort of a, um, a little photography. <laughs> I don't know, the word is escaping me, but sort of a light box kind display. of display. And it uses really simple um, materials like like a couple of um, the big poster boards that our kids use for um, for school projects. And really it's just a table next to a window with a couple of those big poster boards. 
and you can create a really simple way to take those pictures that you're looking for. And since your products are typically white, you know, you may want to use like more of a gray background. And, um, but those sorts of things are very simple to find. I mean, you can go on Amazon and order um, a small light gray matte backdrop for 10 or $12 maybe. Um, but in that, in that product photography workshop, we should we go through exactly how to set that up? And with that sort of a setup next to a window, if you have a window available or even a door, you can just even prop a door open, that will give you fantastic product photography light. And it'll allow you to really get what you're talking about as far as like that, that shine and the sparkle on the pieces that you're making. Um, that natural light will allow it to be color correct. Like you won't have, I noticed like in your um, studio, you have sort of fluorescent lights and that sort of a thing. And so you won't have the color tint from the different types of lights because that right. sunlight is really natural and provides the true color, which I'm sure is something that's important that you wanna communicate um, with what you're making. And so um, that product photography workshop will be really helpful. And I, I mean, I am totally behind you as far as trying to get it as perfect as possible in camera because um, that's really all of our goal. The other thing um, that we'll talk about in the in the editing workshop in a couple weeks is um, creating your own presets. So as opposed to, I think whenever we think about filters, we picture things that are really heavy handed and don't look like they're real. But what you can do in the Lightroom app that we're gonna go through is you can, um, you can you can take a photograph and you can do all of the edits on it that you will typically want to do for most of your images because probably yours are going to be pretty consistent as far as what you're taking pictures of. So, you know, you're, you can go through and you can, um, you know, you may want to increase the vibrance just slightly. You may want to increase the clarity just slightly. And so that's probably something that you're going to do on most of your images. And then you can create your own preset so that in the future for every picture that you, that you import, you click one button and it hits all of those edits. So it is a huge time saver. And then like if if that particular picture needs to be hand edited just a tiny bit, then it, it still saves a ton of time. So between getting it right in camera and creating your own presets, I think it'll save a lot of time and you'll be able to get the images that you want. So. Yeah. And Scott, it really does help with that backdrop. What she shows you on that webinar and it just i'm more of a visual person and so watching her set that up would be great so if you go to the website and look at that that will be really helpful yeah so we do, I'm, I did I'm looking post. mainly for consistency mm -hmm. yes well and i did post in the um we do have uh, I, I did post the link and we'll send it out to you um under our website webinars and presentations um nikki's first two workshops um uh, basically the basics of photography 101 and what and and part one and part two are there the product photography um will will uh, work on getting that up as soon as possible um and i do think nikki this is really important that you do have like I think you guys are the perfect um, example. So Greg, you're an on the go photographer. Like you've got to catch stuff, capture stuff in the moment and, and kind of, you know, and, and, and be right there and right then. At the right where, time. Uh, whereas right Scott, time. <laughs> yeah, whereas Scott, you're product photography. So you have the time to take time, but you still want to do it really efficiently. So I think that those are, you guys have great examples. Yeah. Um, Mary, uh, I know that you're in food and you have a, a question up for, for us about what kind of camera that you would recommend for a beginner. Um, she's talking about the fact that her iPhone is older, doesn't take great um, photos. Um, yep. And I know that we are talking about really using your phone as a, you know, a way to edit and some other things. So, so when we're talking about, um, you know, Greg has a, has a camera, how do you attach it to your phone? So what do you recommend when, you know, so specifically Mary's in the, in the food business. So she's going to be taking a lot of um, food photography, camera, phone, both. What do you recommend? You know, I actually highly recommend upgrading your phone. I mean, I think that, I think it's fantastic to have, um, you know, a DSLR camera, but I think that the benefit of the DSLR comes when you, when you take the time to learn how to use all the settings and learn how to shoot in manual. And so that's a whole nother conversation that, um, we're not, you know, we're not going to have here. I mean, there's, there's a lot of resources as far as learning how to do that, but that's a whole nother 
you know, that's a whole other learning curve. And I think that's where the benefit of the DSLR comes in. Or if you're doing, um, you know, if you're shooting, if you're, if you're like, let's say you're shooting action. And so you really want to try to shoot through and get like lots of images all in one burst. Sometimes our phones can do that. Sometimes they can't. But I think that having an upgraded newer phone is a really good investment for a business owner because um, not only are the cam is the camera quality, I mean, it, amazing. The camera quality on our images, on our, on our phones has really become pretty amazing, especially for use online. And so then it also be just be your workflow becomes a lot more efficient because then you're not sitting down at a computer and having to offload those pictures off of a camera and then having to then import them onto your phone in order to put them on social media. Right. You take the pictures on your phone, you're right there. That's one thing that we'll talk about um, in the workshop is sort of creating a seamless workflow as far as from shutter to social. So we'll talk about, you know, we want to try to create as efficient a process as we can and that includes taking the picture, editing the picture, organizing all of these pictures. And this is more of a do as I say, not as I do situation because I have like 11,000 pictures on my phone right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but it'll, it'll be important. We'll talk through creating folders on your phone so that you can um, efficiently be able to find all the pictures that you've taken so that you can have them handy for those social media posts that you want to make. Um, one thing I talk a lot about that I really think is important is trying to shoot proactively to, to build a portfolio of images so that let's say it's Thursday and you really want to post something on Thursday because you haven't posted anything since last Tuesday, but you don't have a picture. But if you if you take, you know, five or 10 minutes a day and have a shot list of things that you really want to try to build into your portfolio and say, okay, today I have five minutes and I want to try to capture um, this essence of my business. So I'm going to spend the next five minutes taking pictures to try to capture that message and then put them in a folder on your phone, edit them, get them ready to go, put them in a folder on your phone and bam, you're ready for the next time you have a social media post that you want to make. You have this portfolio of varied fully edited, ready to go pictures. Um, so Mary, my, the answer to that question, I think would probably be to go towards the side of a newer phone, something that's gonna give you um, all of the bells and whistles that the newer cameras on our newer phones have. Um, because I think that while you can upload apps that give you some of that flexibility, like some camera apps, there's one called Camera Plus that gives you a little bit more flexibility than the older cameras on older phones do. When, when you have that as, as your option, it, it just makes it slower because then you have to open the app and then you have to, you know, whereas if it's the native camera on your phone, you can just swipe over, turn that camera on and you're ready to take your picture. So I think it makes shooting easier and um, you're gonna feel more successful because you'll be able to capture those moments as they're happening. Um, instead of having to fiddle around finding that app that's on like the third slide of your phone <laughs> and then you can't remember what it looks like. <laughs> so. well, and Nikki, I, I think you've said this before in the other workshops. I mean, it's really important when you get th that shot of that food or that place that you do put it out on social media almost immediately. And so it's relevant and it's updated. And it's so I love how you said going from shutter to, to social. That that's That's a great Concept. You've got some really good one-liners, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, she really does. <laughs> Mary, and Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are kind of a hybrid um, between uh, what Greg is experiencing and what Scott is doing, whereas you are going to have the in-the-moment shots. You know, you're going to have team things that you do. You're going to, um, you know, fortunately in your situation, you'll have construction. Like you want to bring people into the experience they're having. You also have food to still photography, to do as product photography um that you can that you can highlight so you kind of have the best of both worlds because you're not really you know stuck in one or the other you're able to do both and, and need to do both Great. yes i have a lot of learning to do but i do want to mention and say thank you to nikki she um was a benefit to me and my business tony's to come and do photos last week and they are fantastic and um i'm going to i'm actually working on marketing calendar and all that right now um and i just need to learn to do more myself and a new phone is a good idea it's just i'm a dinosaur and i don't like change so i 
didn't want to do that, but I mean, I, I have to update. <laughs> I have to stay yeah, in Mary, the I, I am like you too. I had the iPhone 8 until probably two months ago and I'm it was so- You tried it from your hands. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a small it's a small learning curve. Yeah, I, I used to have the flip phone just two months ago, but there's, <laughs> it, it's, it's a smaller learning curve than what, what you think it is. And, and Oh, I'm, okay, good. <laughs> It is. I think that one of the things, Mary, that I experience, and I'm an Android user, but um, the, really the usability of it is is about the same. So if you already have an iPhone, you know, a lot of the the intuitiveness of where you're finding things is is really similar. So okay, it really is. I and Mary, I completely relate. And I'm a photographer, and I just up, upgraded <laughs> to like a six. I think I had a six, maybe six. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember. And now, I mean, now. It's, <laughs> a newer one, but, um, but my 15 year old daughter was the one who was like, did you know that you can do this? And I was like, really? And so, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> the younger, the kids, the better. My four-year-old oh, granddaughter will show me anything. Grab those, yeah. grab those kids. That grab those young ones. Mm -hmm. and How about them. any other questions? Um, we've got a few more of you guys out there that we'd love to hear from. And feel free to type it in or send it to us um, individually. And we understand that um, not everybody can be on video. And sometimes we have background noise going on and all these things. It's called the world that we live yeah. in now. <laughs> well, and, and you guys might also have comments or some advice or tips that you'd like to share too. So Absolutely. please share. Absolutely. So Nikki, you mentioned, and I'll try to look these up as you're mentioning them and post them in the chat, but you mentioned some, some apps that, um, that you would definitely encourage. And um, I don't know if you just have a, a set list of those, but um, maybe talking about the benefits or what you use them for typically, what would that, what would that look like for everybody? I think that, like I mentioned before, my number one recommendation would be that Lightroom mobile app. I believe that it's free, like the introduction, introductory version of it is free, but then you can upgrade. And I think maybe it's like five or $10. And the upgrade is really um, important. I recommend doing it because the upgrade allows you to make spot adjustments. And what that means is that um, let's say your, your subject's face is a little bit darker than you want it to be and it doesn't look uh, the way that it looked in person, you can actually just um, uh, spot adjust their face. So you could just sort of grab their, the, the area around their face and increase the exposure on their face. And I don't believe that that is the case with the, um, the free version, but even the free version is still very powerful. It's, it's the app that I highly recommend. Um, I think that it within the Lightroom mobile app, it allows you to um, do the things that normally you would have to have two or three other apps to be able to do, and it's just all in one place. Um, the, a couple other ones that are fantastic and that people really like are called Afterlight and Snapseed. Um, those are both well-regarded. People like those a lot. Um, I think that the key is to find the app that feels the most intuitive to you. So whether it's Lightroom or Afterlight or Snapseed, I think if you try them all out, I think they all offer a free version. So you can kind of pop into them and see which interface feels the most intuitive to you. Um, see which one just feels natural. I think that we all have different inclinations and, um, and finding the one that works best for you um, is kind of more important than anything else. Um, there's an app called Touch Retouch and that allows you to, um, let's say you have a, a lovely picture of a restaurant scene and there happens to be somebody in the background who um, you wanna get rid of <laughs> for whatever reason, maybe their eyes are closed or they're making a crazy face or whatever. Or you just wanna get rid of them. <laughs> you just wanna get rid of them. Um, touch Retouch allows you to select an object and it has some kind of smart brain in the app that will fill that area in with um, whatever is similar to what's around it. So it, um, it's pretty, sometimes it's a little wonky and doesn't work that great. But if you have a relatively simple background, you can really take things out. Now Lightroom, the Lightroom mobile app will do that in the app also. So, um, but if you choose an app that doesn't have that option, Touch Retouch is an app that that's what it does specifically. And then another app that you I mentioned one about Seed, what was that one? It's called Snapseed. Snapseed, okay. Got it. Uh, and then there's another app called Canva. So it's like Canvas without the S. And Canva allows you to um, add text or simple graphics to your images for use on social media. Um, and they have templates so you can create 
um, collages and that sort of a thing. Um, I, I think sometimes those apps tend to be, um, they can get a little bit kind of silly, <laughs> but I think Canva does a really good job of allowing you a lot of flexibility. So you can, um, you can like, you can open up um, a template that they've already created. And if it's a little bit too busy or the colors aren't quite what you want, you can um, actually, there's a ton of flexibility to go in and remove elements of the graphic that they created or change the background color to match your brand, um, that sort of a thing. So it allows a lot of flexibility within those templates and sorts of things that they have, that they've pre-made for you. So that's a great one. Um, it's free also, I think. So and we're really excited because we have a Canva um, conversation coming up with um, oh. with Melina Arso in uh, January. Um, she's oh. one of our, our marketing consultants. And so she's going to be doing a whole thing on Canva. Um, just real quick, um, Greg has shared that Nikon. So a lot of the um, apps that you're talking about are either, as I'm looking them up, they're either Apple. One of Adobe is um, Afterlight. But their Apple or you know Google Play is where you're finding these apps. But um, he shared an app. Uh, Nikon has an app called Snap Bridge. Do you know anything? And it's for Android or Apple. Do you know anything about that, Nikki? I actually don't. I don't think I've ever used Snap Bridge. But now I'm curious about it because I'm an Nikon. Yeah, Greg, fill us in. What what does it do? What Snap the what Snap Bridge does? It takes your uh, smart device and links it with the camera so that you can pull those files down to that device and also shoot from it as well. So you can also do video and it kind of controls your camera if you're away from it as it's on a tripod and it allows you that access to your, your files right away, your photos right away. Excellent. That would work really well then if you have um, a, a camera that doesn't have the Wi-Fi ability to, is that what it's, the purpose yes. of it? Is it that doesn't oh, great. That's great. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Well, are there any other ones? I'm posting all of these in the chat just so everybody knows. And again, we will share a copy of the chat. Um, in my experience, when we copy the chat, I don't know that it necessarily includes the link like a clickable link. Um, right. but, it, but we are putting the names of everything on here. So at least um, <laughs> at least you'll be able to. Yeah. And you can always copy the link and then yeah. just paste it in the, in your yeah. drawer. Yeah. But... Exactly. Well, great. Nikki, those, those apps are great suggestions. Is there any, like if, if I asked you, and I always do this, but I always ask, what would be your top three tips that you could give, give us in photographing just about anything? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always try to narrow it down. Yeah, so let's, three let's things, just three. Narrow it down just a little bit because I do think that because we're putting in the context of, of small business editing on the move, you know, um, I would say, Scott, um, you know, you even have some some human opportunities in your business of, you know, um, of, of people or things or some action in addition to um, what you're photographing as a as a product. So I do, you know, everybody wants to have this, you know, human experience through photography when it comes to posting on social media. So, so if we were to, some of your top tips for small businesses, what are your kind of editing on the move? We've already said like folders and some of these other things, but, but what are some, what are some of those top tips that you would, that you would suggest? Well, I think that um, if we're talking about straight editing, my, I think my two biggest tips when it comes to editing specifically are to create those presets of your own. Because I, I'm a strong believer in, um, in simple editing and just really trying to polish the picture that you've already taken. And you can do that um, so much more efficiently rather than having to hand edit and create every single edit for every single picture. Even if, you know, 75% of them are in the exact same spot in your studio, um, creating that preset will just save you a ton of time. Um, and then you won't be having to rely on the pre-made presets and filters, which I think um, I'm just generally not a big fan of. Um, and the other thing that you can do if you are in a situation where you're going to have a little bit more um, diversity of the pictures that you're taking, like let's say in Mary's situation where she's a restaurant and she has an indoor dining room that she may be taking evening pictures in and she may be taking daytime pictures in. 
And then she has a patio, so she may be taking overcast pictures and sunny pictures. Now you wouldn't wanna put the same um, edits on all those pictures because they're not the same type of lighting and they're not the same type of feel to them. So you can create, let's say you could, and you name your preset. So you could create a preset that says, you know, dining room evening and then dining room daytime and then patio overcast and patio sunny so that you can, depending on what type of picture you take, you can hit the right preset that you've created. Um, so that, I mean, it's, there's just so much flexibility there. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, if you need to go back through and do a little bit of tweaking on it, you can, you can change anything once you've hit it with your preset. Um, and then I think the other editing, um, the specific editing recommendation that I would make is to try to create the most efficient um, pipeline as you can, just get your workflow as efficient as possible. And that's where that having a, a nicer camera that's going to have a good, a nicer phone that's going to have a good camera on it really comes in handy because it um, just simplifies your process. Um, I think that proactive shooting is really helpful for small business owners because, I mean, I think that, you know, it's great to be able to have a photographer come to your place and, and take pictures, but I'm only there for an hour or two hours and I don't know your business like you do. And so I think I really feel like with just a little bit of foundational knowledge about photography, using the light in your space efficiently or effectively and um, some different composition um, tools and tricks that you can use to um, help your viewer's eye move through the image a little bit um, more intentionally. Just a little bit of foundational knowledge like that can really elevate your photography to a level where you can, you can take these pictures, these ongoing day in and day out types of pictures for your business, um, for social media or marketing purposes like that so much more effectively than I can. Um, because I think that so much of the message in your photographs really has to do with you knowing your business and you knowing your clients and you knowing your, your team and your staff and that sort of a thing. So um, I just think that um, as the business owner, you are in a position to be able to take pictures that speak to your client um, and your customers much more effectively than I can. So, um, so that's probably my, my biggest recommendation for small business owners is just invest a little bit of time learning, whether it's, you know, our workshops or there's lots of information out there um, in various different formats that is really helpful. Um, and I think that Amy, what you mentioned before is also important. I think that when we talk about product photography, um, I think sometimes we can get pigeonholed into thinking that it has to be the product in like a portrait of itself. But I think that, creating that varied social media feed means that in addition to those types of um, those product photographs where it's just a portrait of the product, you can really include um, humans, you know, like you could, you could do a, um, a photograph of somebody on your staff, or you could do maybe one of your clients who was particularly pleased with your work. You could do a little, you know, a little short snippet on them and um, and in that, in that photography workshop that we did, we talk about ways to get portraits of people um, using existing light. You don't need special lighting. You don't need fancy equipment. You need a window and a, you know, and a phone. So, <laughs> I mean, you can, you can take a portrait of a, of a customer or that sort of a thing. Um, I think that that, I think that that helps your, your customer base really relate to your, your brand and your product um, in a way that, just seeing the product by itself might not um, bridge that and help communicate that. So that would sort of- What I really hear you saying is nobody knows your business better than you do, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, I really and the feeling, of, yeah. yeah, and the feeling that you want to portray from your business, yeah. the emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that I will say, because you know, we in our small business consulting, we do come across a lot of people that are like, I don't have time to do my own bookkeeping. Well, if you don't have time to do your own photography, what we always say is no enough to make good decisions. So, you know, if you do have somebody in your staff or in your sphere that um, maybe does enjoy taking pictures, maybe they're, you know, marry their, you know, a college kid that you have hired that really loves to do that, you still um, working with them to kind of set these parameters and the 
consistency and and being very specific about what it is that you want them to capture i think is is another thing that that you can do again it's it's knowing enough to make these good decisions and not just turning it over you know any more than you would a bookkeeper like oh just keep my books and whatever you do is fine like you wouldn't do that either so i think it's um the same with your brand and i think um one of the things we've been talking with Nikki about, another topic that does come up um, a lot is about aligning your photos um, with your brand. And so um, we may dive into that a little bit deeper. Is there anything else? One, I want to make sure everybody knows we just have a few more minutes. It's a lunch break. So um, we're looking at 45 minutes. So we'll stop at 1245. But um, if you have any more questions for um, Nikki, please throw them in there um, so that we can make sure that we get everything answered before she has to go. Somebody else? Nikki, tell us a little bit about um, the workshop coming up on uh, December 1st at 2 p.m. Yes, I'm really excited. So the workshop that's coming up in December is going to be all editing. And so it's going to be what we've talked about today, but we're going to get like details. We're going to get in depth in that Lightroom um, editing app. So we're going to learn all about, ex you know, increasing exposure and using the clarity sliders and the temperature sliders and tent and what all of those things mean. Um, and I think like I mentioned before, it can be a lot, it can be a ton of information, but I think that getting um, uh, just a little bit of a hand a handhold on that information and then creating those presets that you know that you're going to use on a daily or regular basis um, really helps to simplify that information. But just knowing what all of those because Lightroom has a ton of um, features in there. And so knowing what they all mean and knowing how they affect your photograph um, will be really helpful. So we'll talk all about that. And then we'll also talk about using editing to help um, support and um, highlight your brand awareness. So we'll talk about, you know, coming up with, with descriptors that help to describe the look and feel of your particular brand and then using that sort of a thing to, um, then can be communicated in your editing. So what we love to see, and, and I noticed this in my own um, social media scrolling, when I'm on Instagram, I can scroll through all of the different people that I follow. And so often I will, um, I'll see a photograph and I'll know before I even look to see who the Instagram name is, whose photograph it is just because their editing is so consistent and their style is so consistent. And I think that um, I think that any little bit that we can do that helps to grab our viewers attention when they're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook um, is helpful. So we'll talk about ways to keep your editing consistent, but then um, not create, you know, the, the alternative to that is that we don't want to create your social feed so that every single picture looks exactly the same. Right. So we want to find that balance between the, um, the consistency and the brand identity and that unity. But then also within your own feed, we want there to be some very, some varied types of pictures with different types of composition and different perspectives. And so um, I think that the editing can really be the unifying factor um, that helps to create that identifying um, those identifying images on Instagram. So, so that's what we're gonna go through in a couple weeks. I love it so much. I wanna make sure again that we've answered everybody's questions and nobody has anything outstanding before we go. Um, we are sharing on your screen contact information for the ASB TDC. And as a registrant and attendee of this conversation, you will be emailed a copy of this recording as well as um, a brief survey and any information that we posted in the chat today. Um, the survey will help us bring uh, quality programs to you. And uh, speaking of which, Chris? Yeah. Well, and I want to remind you again, I know we've already said it a couple times, but Nikki's webinar is coming up on December 1st at 2 p.m. So make sure that you don't miss that. And you can also find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu. And you can also use that QR code that you see right there on your screen. But please sign up for our not notifications and become a, to become a client. And also don't forget to follow us on social media. We've got a lot going on out there right now that we're sharing. So we are all over Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And um, so, so go check us out. Like I said, we've got a lot going on that can really be of help. But um, please stay in touch and we will see you guys all soon. We really appreciate everybody being here today. Thank you all so much.
Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you soon.